helps that we have in our walk with God. And uh, a lot of times I have found that we, we need helps, in fact, on a regular basis in most cases. And uh, I, uh, I've wondered about this, and so I've put this uh, message, three-part message together, the different helps, and last week I talked about the help that comes direct from God, and that's having Christ in your life, and so forth. And today, I'm going to talk about help from the Bible, help from the Bible. So uh, we're going to take a look at some scripture there. Before I do, while you're finding your, your place, if you want to read with me on the text, I'm going to read 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3 and verse 16. So uh, that'll be my text this morning. But I want to make announcements. Uh, let's, uh, uh, let's all try to be here next Sunday. We're going to have a guest speaker, uh, which I think we'll all enjoy. And our guest speaker is going to be Brother Bill Wilkerson at uh, attended church here last year. Uh, and uh, Betty Suit says that, that uh, God sent him here just to help us remodel the church. And, and it sure looks that way because he was here during the whole remodel and helped us with the whole thing. And he was, he's really good help. He, he knows how to do things and, and work with tools and, and whatever. And uh, Got, got a, an excellent uh, attitude about things and so forth. And so I'm looking forward to having him with us. I've talked to him two or three times on the phone since he attended church here. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I guess we decided at the business meeting to have a barbecue on uh, uh, probably one on the 4th of July and one on the 1st of May. Uh, and uh, I, I didn't look and see what day of the week those come on, but we'll probably tr move them to whatever it takes to uh, have them on Saturdays. That's a good day for that sort of thing. So that's an uh, announcement. Something we didn't cover at the, uh, at the business meeting that I'd like for the, uh, everybody to think about, and that's our pickup we have out and back. Uh, we didn't discuss that, uh, if, uh, but uh, we don't have any plans for it. It was given to the church, and uh, and so I, I haven't got to the got around to getting it running yet. But I'd like to get it running, and then uh, if anybody has ideas that we want to just sell it or give it to somebody or whatever we want to do, why? Uh, Let's, uh, let's be praying about that. So with that, let us stand this morning. Read our text, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. And it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished or equipped unto all good works. Father, we're thankful for your word this morning, thankful for your many blessings, and Lord, for all that you do for us. I just pray, Lord, for your blessings upon this message. I pray that each one that hears this message will be blessed and will uh, help them to understand their walk with you better. And so I just pray you guide me this morning as I bring forth this message, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated if you, if you wish. The Word of God uh, is so valuable and so interesting. Uh, I don't believe that there's ever been another book written since the creation of this, of this earth uh, that would even come close to, com to be compared with the Bible. It's very interesting, and uh, the, uh, the Bible is interesting. There has been more copies of the Bible printed and sold in America every single year since, I guess, Gutenberg, and that was, I think, before uh, the America, and uh, 
it, it's uh, every year except I think two years. I'm going by memory, uh, but I believe it was two years. There was uh, the the books that was written by oh I can't think of the guy's name. I had it in my mind just a minute ago, but the guy that wrote books about raising kids. Uh, Dr. Spock. Dr. Mm -hmm. Spock. There was two years, I understand that they sold more of his books than the Bibles in America. Uh, I think that's kind of interesting in a way. But, uh, but the Bible is, there's Bibles everywhere, especially in America. Uh, there's Bibles been smuggled into countries that forbids the gospel to be preached. I recall a, a poster in, in one of the churches that I go to for pastor's prayer, and it's talked about the Bible said it's, uh, 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 it's, it's uh, we're free to, to read and preach this book everywhere on earth except 52 countries. And I thought that was kind of interesting to hear that figure and so forth, but they do forbid it. And it's interesting, some of the stories I've heard about people that have smuggled Bibles into countries where they were forbidden, like in China, and uh, Brother Quinn, I don't know how many of you uh, knew Brother Elsie Quinn. Uh, he was one of them that, that smuggled Bibles into, into China. And so did Brother uh, uh, Melvin Johnson. Uh, Melvin Johnson's a precious brother, and uh, haven't heard from him in a couple years, and I, I need to give him a call and see how he's doing. I know he's in his 90s. Uh, he was in his 90s like, well, before Linda and I was married, so he would be in his late 90s by now. So, uh, but a precious brother that has, that is, he served the Lord for Many years when he was in the service, he would be stationed in foreign countries and he would always put together Bible studies uh, and have them in various places. One time on the rooftop of a building and people would gather up there and he'd have Bible studies. And so uh, there's been some great men that God has had. And, uh, but the Word of God is a wonderful, a wonderful book for us to to take very serious and, and so forth. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, challenges made uh, for the Word of God. Uh, they say that some of the stories in the, in the Word of God isn't true. And it seems like every time they pick out one to attack, then the archeologist uh, uh, and geologist, uh, they find evidence to, to prove that the stories was true. And so uh, it's, it's very interesting. In Psalms chapter 119, verse 105, the Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Uh, and I, I, uh, that's very interesting. And if there's something that's interesting about this, he, this is uh, the uh, lamp unto my feet. Back in, in Bible days, they didn't have flashlights or electric uh, lights like flashlights or our smartphones we have nowadays and so forth. And when they traveled, many times they had to travel to, at night to get to where they was going. And so they had a device that was kind of interesting and fastened on their feet. And they had a light that burned from a wick and using olive oil for fuel, and that light was on their feet, and it gave them just enough light to make one step. And they would make one step, and, and so the Lord always gives us enough light to make one more step. And sometimes we wonder where he's taken us, isn't it? And what he's going to do next, and where he's going to lead us, and what we might find along the path where we're going. But uh, it says, the, uh, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. In Proverbs uh, uh, chapter uh, 16 and verse 17, the Bible says, The highway of the upright 
is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. So I, I think about this, and I think about uh, there's a route that was uh, just about coast to coast many years ago. It was a well-known uh, highway that went across the United States, west to east, and parts of it is still there today, and it's called Highway 66. And I thought that's kind of interesting because the Bible tells us about a highway that... Uh, is uh, that we need to stay on and I want to look at that highway today and you know what the number of that highway is it's also highway 66 there's 66 books in the Bible and I think that's kind of an interesting uh, coincidence and I think that's what it is but it's a uh, it's a great thing uh, in, in Isaiah chapter 35 Verses 8 and 9, the Bible says, And a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring man, though fools, shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. Interesting highway that we are walking on, and, it, and this, uh, this language that's used here, uh, of course, it's relevant to the cultures of, of the day, back in Bible days, when people traveled out on the roads, and, and it says the way of holiness, uh, speaking about our spiritual walk, is a way that the unclean shall not walk on that highway. And uh, there shall be, and even though a person, even if he's a fool, he can walk on that way. If he's living a holy life, he can walk on that way. And it's a way that there'll be no harm that will come to him. There'll be no lions in the way, no ravenous beast, or any such thing. But all of those things will will be absent from that highway that we walk on so we fight our battles and we have our problems but you know the lord is always with us and we have this highway that we travel on and it says that this way is a way of holiness and when i think about holiness i think about uh things comes to my mind but the 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 things that, uh, that uh, some of the things I think about is in the churches that I grew up in, we'll find that holiness had a different meaning in it than what the Bible has. Uh, and I hate to say that, but it's true. And what they called holiness in the churches that I grew up in was a whole bunch of rules you gotta live by. You can go to certain places, you can't go to other places, you have to dress a certain way. Uh, oh, and the list just went on and on and on. And, oh, it was called holiness. And, and I recall asking the question sometimes about certain things that was taught uh, in these churches that, uh, and things that we was expected to believe and to embrace and, and follow. And I remember here and asking the, uh, the question about different things and I remember the answer that I got more than every other answer when I said, well, why can't we go to a certain place or why can't we do this or can't do that? And the answer that I heard more than any other answer was, it's worldly. Now, what does that mean? Nobody ever told me that. But what does that mean? It's just a, a, a word I don't think they understood themselves, the adults that I would ask the question to. But... They had to have an answer, so that's what they told us. Well, that's worldly. Well, worldly was, was contrary to the Lord, and, and uh, so uh, we never got explanations for a lot of things. You just follow the rules and, and don't worry about it. So uh, I, uh, after I've become a Christian and I got to study in the, the Word of God, I come across some interesting scripture that I'd like to share with you about holiness. And there's found in the fourth chapter of Ephesians, 
And I want to start in verse uh, 23, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 23. The Bible says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. True holiness. Now, what is true holiness? That's the, that's the question. And you, can, you can ask these things and, and, uh, and so forth. And, and uh, it's one, but what, what is true holiness? Well, if we just read on a little bit to, uh, here in this setting of Scripture, the Bible tells us what true holiness is. And, I, and I'd like you to really listen to what true holiness is. Uh, it's not the way you dress or where you go or, or those kind of things, but here is what true holiness is. Wherefore, put away lion, speak every man the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. So that's one thing, in, which is actually in harmony with the Ten Commandments of the Old Testament. Uh, put in the way lion, speak every man truth. Be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. So these are some of the things, many things is, is listed here. Verse 28, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing that is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. And I, I tell you, when we look at this and uh, work with your hands that you may have to give to people that are in need. And I want to tell you something that uh, I believe that every Christian should be a generous person. I really believe that. We should be a generous person. And uh, you might say, well, I just don't, uh, I don't have uh, anything to give. I don't, uh, I just uh, barely make it from month to month and barely get my bills paid, and I just don't have, I will tell you something, the poorest people there are has the most to give, and I really believe that, because they can give of themselves, they can give a word of encouragement, uh, they can give many things to people that are in need, there's many people that are lonely, and you can be a friend to somebody that's lonely. Uh, and there's just a lot of things that you can give to people that are in need. And when you look around us and you see the needs of people that's in our society, you'll find that those people in our society, there's many people that are in need uh, that their needs cannot be fixed with money, with finances and, and material things, but they need other things, need somebody to care and and somebody just to be with them in their time of, of sadness and, and so forth. So, uh, uh, let him that steals, steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So, no corrupt communication. Whenever you say things, and whenever you are, uh, especially uh, your attitudes and things like that, they should be uplifting and encouraging uh, the kind of attitudes and the things that we need to have, uh, but not corrupt things and not evil things and so forth, but we need to, to uh, things that edify. Edify means to build up and to lift up and to, uh, to help people uh, in, in that way. Verse 30 says, Grieve not the Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of, re of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. So, 
these are the things to recognize this and and we need to uh, promote holiness and walk in holiness and it has like I said before it has nothing to do with all of those rules and and uh, and I was talking to a man on the phone the other night and uh, we've been good friends for a long time and and uh, I don't agree with some of his ideas he was raised in the same kind of church I was apparently only he embraces that sort of thing. And he said something about uh, the, some uh, Christian women that's all made up with makeup and jewelry and all those things. And, and he said, look like Jezebel. Uh, you know, the man needs to take a look at the scripture. And I haven't had a chance to really point this out to him. But uh, they talk about women that overdoes with the makeup and jewelry, and of course those those churches like I was talking about, they forbid any kind of makeup or or uh, uh, jewelry or anything. In fact, I know one of the the organization that is so carried away with that that if you go to their Bible college and you could not wear this pin in your shirt, you know why? because that clip that holds it in is shiny that makes it jewelry and they don't allow jewelry. Can you imagine anything so petty and so, uh, what's the word that we can use which is so out of line with Bible teaching? In fact, the children of Israel, they wore jewelry and God did not oppose to that. But when you get back to Jezebel and they talk, of, they talk about that Jezebel with all of her makeup and stuff, did God ever rebuke Jezebel for the way that she wore makeup or jewelry? And the answer is no. God never did. In fact, all the Bible says about Jezebel and where that's concerned is the Bible says she painted her eyes. And that's all it says about that. But God was very unhappy with Jezebel. Why was God unhappy with Jezebel? He was unhappy with Jezebel because she led the children of Israel into Baal worship. And that's what God was upset with Jezebel. That would be like us uh, uh, taking Christian people and teaching them to follow the Muslim religion or one of the other non-Christian uh, religions that there is in the world and she took people away from the Lord and had them worship in other gods besides uh, the true God and so it is that uh, uh, we need to follow the Word of God and I tell you some of the finest people that I've ever known has been people uh, that uh, uh, like we can look around here to our people in our church here this morning and those churches of legalism, boy, they would get down on these women something terrible because they're wearing pants and all these churches, they, they, they just allow their women to wear just dresses. They, they can't wear slacks or, or uh, denims or anything like that at all. But there's nothing in the Bible that says that. And the very scripture that they used to promote that uh, was talking about people just wearing robes. But, uh, they, but that's not what they, they embrace the, the cultural uh, ideas or, or uh, fashions uh, that was in place back in the 1920s and 1930s is what they're really embracing, not the, the customs that's in the Bible that that scripture was talking about. So uh, it's pretty interesting uh, when we look at uh, these things. Now, we're talking about this highway of holiness that, uh, that I was talking about here this morning. And uh, in uh, 2 Corinthians, I'd like to share a scripture there with you. Uh, well, first of all, let me back up. Uh, the, uh, uh, I missed something here. The, oh, doctrine. The doctrine of holiness. I covered that in the next... There's four things that's, that's listed there on our, on our scripture text. And those things are, are uh, 
uh, uh, doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness. And so we find that doctrine tells us how we should live. It tells us how we should walk on, on the highway of holiness. And we need to be walking on that. And the second thing that it mentions there is reproof. Reproof. What is reproof? The reproof is conviction or evidence. And reproof tells us when we stray from that highway, when we get off of that highway, the Bible tells us that we've got off the highway. So the Word of God is profitable for that. And uh, so uh, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5, it says, Examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you except you be reprobates. The word reprobate means to be unapproved, rejected, worthless, or a castaway. That's what uh, uh, it means for uh, the word reprobate. And so the Bible says to examine yourself. And so we need to examine ourselves occasionally, see if we're still walking on the highway of holiness. The, the doctrines tells us what that highway is. Reproof tells us when we get when we stray from the highway of holiness. The next thing that uh, that uh, the the word of God is good for is correction, and the correction shows us how to get back on the highway that we have uh, strayed off of. Uh, if we uh, uh, look at Luke chapter 17 and verse 3, the Lord tells us, Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And so, correction. And somebody tells you when you went astray, okay, then you take a look and you examine yourself, you see if it's correct, and if you've got off that highway, then you get back on. And so this is what the Word of God is good for. And so uh, that's three of the four. And the fourth thing that I want to take a look at this morning for uh, what the Word of God is good for, it's good for instruction in righteousness. And instruction in righteousness shows us how to stay on the highway. Doctrine shows us what the highway is. Uh, what was the second one? Uh, my memory's not good, so I look at this. Doctrine, let's see. Doctrine and reproof was the second one. So doctrine tells us what the highway is. Reproof tells us when we get off the highway. Correction tells us how to get back on the highway. And correct and instruction in righteousness tells us how to stay on the highway of holiness. And I'll tell you, there's, there's a lot of people that doesn't like to be instructed. And I'll tell you something that used to upset me when I was, before I retired from line work, is when we would get an apprentice on the crew, and it, part of my job was, and same with all the journeyman linemen, it, it was our job to help train these, these uh, apprentices coming up. And, I, and uh, I'll tell you something that really bothered me about a lot of these guys is you try to explain something to them and they say, yeah, I know, I know. When, well, if you know, why are you an apprentice? Uh, they, they, uh, if they, they knew everything they thought they did, they'd be a journeyman. There would be no need for, for the training they was going through. And so we need correction and many times uh, we resent people correcting us in different things and sometimes, and more about this two weeks from today, I'll be talking more about this, but correction in uh, 
in, in this uh, uh, instruction in righteousness, you'll find that a lot of your instruction comes from other people. And that's what I'm going to be talking about is how that other people uh, helps us in our walk with the Lord. And uh, other people is very important. So I want to share some scriptures in the, from the book of Proverbs. And I want to go to chapter 1, and I want to read verses 1 through 9. And we have instruction there in the, in the book of uh, Proverbs, written by the wisest man that, uh, that there ever has been. That's been debated, by the way. Uh, and uh, so here we find that, uh, but I believe he was the wisest man. And in Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, the Bible says, and this is kind of an introduction to the book of Proverbs, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to receive the words of understanding, to know wisdom and instruction. So, are you a wise person? Do you know how to give instruction? Well, that's pretty important to, to learn that. And sometimes it takes a long time to learn that. And I, I have found over the years, I've had to change the way I approach different things. I, I'll never forget one time I was uh, at a minister's meeting uh, that we had annually down in Southern California. We met once a year and, and uh, there was, we scheduled fellowship meetings and different things at that meeting and I, I brought something up and, and uh, I look back on that and I was doing it as a favor to one of the ministers and to, to be helpful for the group and so forth, but I didn't approach it correctly. When I, when I look back, I, Today I would do it a lot of different, a, a lot differently, uh, and I had to do some explanation because I hurt this guy's feelings, and so forth, and I had to do some explanation to, to smooth that out, and so forth. And uh, but today I would be, I would have done that in a lot different way, but uh, so a lot of times we need to learn how to counsel and so forth, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtility to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. I, uh, when you read the Bible, there's something interesting that is said about the age, uh, the aged. Uh, you know, the Bible said, uh, uh, I forget how the scripture is is worded, but it it says uh, something about the, the the gray hair of man speaking about his age, and the wisdom of the man with gray hair or something to that extent. Well, I'll tell you something that I found out about that. Uh, come to the realization, the Bible also said, uh, "Blessed are the are the feet of him that preach the gospel." So. I guess I'm good on both ends. So uh, when we uh, look at that, but uh, years ago, before we had all the books and, and all the, the, the technology and the things we have today, you know where some where the young men went to learn things and to get wisdom and so forth? They went to the older men in the community. Well, why did they do that? They did it because these older men had been around for years and had experienced many things in their lives. And the young men could go to them and talk to them and, and hear about their experiences and, and the stuff they had learned and pass this knowledge on to these young men. And that's the way knowledge was passed on in those days. Now today it's not like this. You get knowledge from computers and, and from books and not books so much anymore, but because it's there on computers and your smartphone and we have all this stuff and, and uh, so that concept has kind of went by the wayside. 
But that's what this is talking about. This is is uh, uh, to give subtility to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. So these are some interesting concepts here that, that we can apply to life and we can learn about how to better get along with one another and, and be profitable. And if everybody is profitable to everybody else, well, how much greater is our community and our relationship with people? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Says, my, my son, hear the instruction of the father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. So, we, we look at these words of wisdom and understanding from Solomon there in the book of Proverbs. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. We have an interesting verse of scripture. Uh, here the Bible says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. And this is talking about the promise of his return. He's not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But not willing, God's not willing that anybody be lost. Did you know that hell was not created for humans. It was not. Uh, they said, well, what was hell created for? The Bible says in the 25th chapter of Matthew that hell was created for the devil and his angels. That's what hell was created for. But when men disobey God and refuse to follow him and conform their, their lives to his teaching, uh, then that's where they end up also. And I know that you don't hear much uh, uh, much preached nowadays, I don't think, about hell and the, the results of sin and so forth, but it's a reality. And we need to realize that there that is the option. If we don't have the Lord in our life, that's where we're going to end up. And so we need to follow the Lord and be with Him. So I look at these scriptures and things and and uh, you may ask ourselves, or you may ask me then, uh, Pastor, uh, where can I find some good help to really understand the word of the Lord? Well, I'm going to give you a list of things that you can use to help you and to understand the Bible and understand the way of the Lord. And that list is, uh, first I want to start off with is concordance. A concordance. What a concordance does, it gives you the definition, uh, like a dictionary in a way, but it gives you uh, the definition of Hebrew and Greek words that was used in the original writings of the Word of God. And there's three companies that put out concordance that I recommend. My favorite is Strong's. I really like Strong's concordance. But there's also Cruden's and there's Young's uh, concordance that, uh, that you can get. And you can get a lot of information from that. Another book that you can get that will really help you, and that's a Thompson Chain Reference Bible. It's a Bible, and it's called a Thompson Chain Reference. And it's one of the best study Bibles that you'll ever be able to get that you, that's available out there anywhere. It's a great Bible, and you can study subjects and different things in this Bible, get all kinds of information and so forth. And in fact, there's uh, in many Bible colleges, when students sign up, they're required to have two books. And one of them is the Thompson Chain Reference Bible, and the other is the Strong's Concordance, the two books besides and if you have another Bible, that's okay to go with it. But 
they want you to have a Thompson Chain Bible. And then another thing you'll find, and I have it on the scriptures. We have there what is called a center reference. And what that center reference does is if you're reading a verse of scripture, then it'll have a little letter by it, and you can go to center reference, and it'll tell you where to go to other places in the Bible for similar teachings or similar scriptures. So that can be very helpful. Another thing that I have in my Bible is at the bottom of the pages, almost every page in my Bible, it has footnotes. And footnotes is a commentary. It's, uh, it's somebody wrote comments uh, about the scripture and explains things about the scripture. So uh, uh, footnotes, and then there's commentaries that are books that are just people explaining the things about the Bible. And there are some good ones. And uh, in, in the use of all of these things, you need to be very careful, especially commentaries. You need to be very careful when you read those because those are men's opinions. Those are not scripture. And I've, I've seen people that just uh, took those, those uh, commentaries as if they was the word of God. Well, they're not. There are people that comments on the Word of God, and most of them is very good. And I, I, there's, uh, I have uh, two sets of uh, commentaries that I like very well, and, uh, and, and I have other books. And the next one that I look at here is dictionaries. Dictionaries. Look up a word and see what it means. And uh, I have three or four Bible dictionaries, and I have one secular dictionary. And uh, the, the Bible dictionaries are just about words in the Bible, where the secular dic uh, dictionary, and, and mine is a, uh, uh, can't think of the word now, the writer of the, of the dictionary. Uh, Webster's. But, uh, Webster's? Webster, thank you. Uh, Joe, uh, and, and that, that book's about that thick. And I remember when I first got, got it, the first, the, the best, the most way it was used is Danny was small and we put that on his chair at the dinner table so he could be high enough to, to reach. And that's what we used it for more than anything else. But now I use it in my Bible studies and things because I want to know what different uh, uh, words mean and, and so forth and it's amazing how much better your understanding can be by the use of some of these books and then of course the last thing I want to mention here that uh, can be a really help for help in understanding God's Word and that is your computer uh, there's some Bible programs like the Blue Letter Bible Bible Gateway the Bible Hub uh, there's uh, there's several of them that's available uh, out there uh, that uh, you can use. I, I really use the, the Bible Gateway more than any of them. And when I put my sermons together, I can just go to that and, and I can type in the scripture I want and boom, it's there. And, and I can just put it right over in my sermon notes and I don't have to type scriptures all out and all that sort of thing. Uh, really helpful. Um, Others are the Hyper Bible and Quick Verse, and, and there's many, many others. And so this morning, we can uh, get our help uh, about our walk with the Lord. We can get it directly from the Lord, or we can get it from the Bible, or we can get it from each other. And that's what I want to talk about in two weeks from today. I want to talk about the help that we get from one another. And that's so, so valuable. It is really valuable. So uh, that's, uh, I hope that this is, is, uh, will help you in your walk with the Lord. That you can find ways to under thing, understand things better and how you can have a, a, a more victorious life in the Lord by learning the things of the Lord and learning them in, in all these ways. So with that, let us stand this morning.